That good? Hey everybody, welcome back to Hit or Die Podcast, episode 37. We're here with uh, Miami Marlins pitcher Dylan Lee. Uh, he's a graduate of Dinuba High School, uh, 2012, was a three-year letter winner, most valuable player in the Central Sequoia League in 2012, attended COS and uh, played for coach Jody Allen. As a sophomore, uh, he led COS with a 13-1 record, which is a school record, and a 2-3-4 ERA guiding the Giants to the California Community College Athletic Association Baseball State Final Four. Uh, earned 13 straight wins before suffering uh, one and only loss to Orange Coast. That was in the Final Four? Yeah. Oh, that's that was tough. a tough one. Um, all California State team, Central Valley Conference Pitcher of the Year, and CVC Gold Glove team uh, following sophomore season. He was academically named to the president's list as a freshman with a 3.64 GPA and the dean's list as a sophomore with a 3.54 GPA. Uh, in 2015 at Fresno State, he posted a 4-2 record with a 5.31 ERA, appearing in 15 games, making five starts, and he was named academic All-Mountain West. In 2016, uh, he was moved to the pin. He was a 2-2 two and two record, 3-4-5 ERA with six saves. And he was also uh, all-academic Mountain West that year as well. Uh, drafted in the 10th round in 16 uh, by the Marlins in 2016. And, and spent uh, time last year with AAA. And uh, he's, again, one step closer uh, to the big leagues. Uh, Dylan, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for guys having me. Appreciate it. Um, get right in. You know... You're a small school guy, and a lot of small school guys don't get credit for um, just where they come from. You know, it's it's not a track school. And, Maybe not enough. Yeah, not enough. And it, it's harder to even be seen is what I'm trying to get uh, being at a small school. So go through, you know, being at Din Dinuba. And I know you're a diehard community guy of Dinuba, and uh, the Dinuba baseball program is a big supporter of, uh, of our show. Um, so just go into, you know, how your time was there and, Getting into COS, was that the only option? Did you have other schools, D1s, anybody looking at you? Well, coming out of Dunia, like you said, it's a small school. So I had some issues with it, but I also got told as a young age, even by my parents, saying that if you're good enough, someone's going to pick you up. Someone's going to see you. They'll come out to see you. And during my senior year, and I think my junior year, there was a couple of pro scouts, area scout guys. It was the Giants guy and the Twins guy. And... They were looking at me, my junior, what is it, winter going into my senior year for okay. baseball. I was told I needed to go to a camp. I needed to like just get seen by uh, Trotsky. I don't know mm -hmm. if there's still a thing, but yeah. so the guy was like, just come out, throw a couple innings, like show you, you need to get seen. Like you need to go out there. And I went out there for the one little thing. I threw an, an inning, three up, three down. Got calls, got those little letters, the email things in the mail. And for me, it just seemed like they were just trying to get you to walk on. They were trying to get you to take a low offer, like a 25%. And for me, I can't I can't even afford that. Like if it was USC offering a 25%, I can't afford my parents can't afford that. And it wasn't it wasn't good enough for me. So I went to COS, my brother went to COS. It was a good option for me. I have no tons of people that go to junior college route, go to a four year. So good program. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really good program. Jody's, you know, he was there when I was, he's a great coach and man, he, uh, he, <laughs> he builds you into a man. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. And I think that's why I fit so good at Fresno state as well. I had the same kind of coaching style all my life when I was a little kid in little league going to different sports. I always had someone that was tough on me, pushed me and wanted the best for me. And I feel like every coach that I've had has done that. So I fit right into the program at COS and at Fresno State because of that. Now, we talked a while ago on the phone. Oh yeah. And I just want to get on the, you know, cause your career at COS was like stellar. Like you have some records, to, I'm sure they still stand. Um. <clears throat> You were about to walk away from the game. Yeah, I don't know if many people know that, but my freshman year was, I don't know if you th threw those numbers out, but my freshman year at COS wasn't the best. Had a lot of mental stuff going on. I was not thinking I was good enough. As you said, a young, I was 17 at the time uh, when I graduated high school and then went to college. So I think 
it was a definitely step up, even though it was just junior college ball. I say that just junior college ball, but still, there's a lot of grinders out there. And it was my first time actually getting structured pitching, just me and a pitching coach talking all the time, like doing everything that I needed to do as a pitcher that I'm doing now as a major leaguer. And I think it was mechanically, I was just getting in my own head. And I didn't think I was good enough because every time I was going out there, I was thinking mechanics, 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 instead of just competing. So that year was horrible for me. Had probably the worst year of baseball. And I I was like, oh, I'm just going to be some high school guy that was good and then just drop out. So that's what I was thinking when I was going into my sophomore year. I remember this vividly i woke up for a morning workout with jody allen of course like at 6 a.m we have to run around the lap and i was living in denny but at the time so i woke up early and i sat down on my bed and i was like this is gonna be the make or break year like i'm gonna give it all i got and see what happens so i just stuck my head down and worked and the results showed my sophomore year so i was definitely it was my last straw like if i didn't have a good year my sophomore year i probably would have dropped it was it, I mean, all just you? I mean, did Jody tell you anything or like was there encouragement elsewhere or was it just like, you know what, I'm not going to go out like that? No, I didn't actually tell anybody. It was mainly just me. It was, I, I'm really hard on myself. I'm my worst enemy and I want the best. I'm a perfectionist and it's a burden, but it also helps me in the same time because I want to get things done right. I want to work. I want it to be the best it can be. And when I was having that failure, it was just almost like too much for me. But I I had a little bit of help from my pitching coach because he was, uh, I think he went to AAA for the Red Sox, older guy. And he told me, he's like, dude, just don't be so hard on yourself. It's going to take time. It's going to take work. And just go out there and compete. And I feel like that was the main thing. Jody never really talked to me about pitching stuff. So it was mainly just, I think he knew what he saw in me, and he's just like, go out there and do your thing. Still had his confidence in you, though, even though, yeah, you know, you felt like that was a rough freshman year. Um, nothing really changed in his mind. No, I don't think so. No, that's and that's awesome, dude, because that it's not very common. You know, if you're not producing, especially as the higher levels you go, it's well, if, especially if you're not used to failure. Yeah, you know, you've been so good all your life, and then you finally get some failure and. You don't know how to handle it. It can go one way or the other. Right. And, you know, you, you know, grabbed it and said, you know, I'm going to freaking do this thing yeah. and, and stick it out. And it paid off. And 13 to 1 record. There's not a lot of co- junior college pitchers. People don't understand <clears throat> 13 wins, even 10 plus wins in junior college is a lot uh, with how many games you guys get to play. Um, so, yeah, 13. I think that's the record even at Fresno City. Um, 13 wins. And that's probably going to hold up for a while. At COS. Even 13 in a row. Oh, I know. 13 in a row. <laughs> you know, 13 in a row. She. What happened against Orange Coast? Huh? You got any- <laughs> oh, man. I don't want to get into that. But no, it was crazy. <laughs> During those 13 stretches, I got real, like, almost, I had meals planned out. I had my days planned out. I was doing the same thing throughout the week. It was crazy. Like, I've never, I don't want to get like that again. It was, <laughs> it was to a point where, I like, my life was on a schedule, and I just knew it. I was like, okay, I'm going to the eat at Porter Subs, and I'll go to Chipotle, and I'll have a Jamba Juice, and yeah, it was... Trying to change it up? Yeah, no, I didn't. Yeah, not not trying to change it up. <laughs> I was just doing the same thing, same routine. But, I mean, I can't change it. It worked. You know, that's where I think a lot of people kind of think JUCO's... I don't know why they think JUCO's a down thing, because a lot of junior college coaches are getting you prepared for Division One because that's normally the next step or where guys want to go um, that go to JUCO is like, I'm a D1 guy. I didn't get any D1 offers or it wasn't enough you know, scholarship. I'm going to go to JUCO, prove that I'm a D1 guy yeah. or get drafted and then go that route. And um, that's where I think... I think junior college prepares you really well for division one and any four-year definitely i think the right juco too i I, the same with d1 schools when we talk about fit Mm -hmm. i think juco you have to look at fit there too oh yeah it's not just well fresno city's close i'm gonna go there because i can tell we've had guys go from adara go to both city readley cos you know pudge is a great example who went to play at cos and 
that was probably a perfect fit for him. I don't think he would have made it at City. I don't think he would have had the the fun he had at City. And that's no knock on City because I know Purcell, they're love, loving it right now. Yeah. And Cole and, and some of our guys there now love it. Um, and then we've had guys go to Reedley. You know, Leach, love Coach Purse. So I think fit there is the same thing. And, um, you know, it, it's going to prepare you, you know, the right program. Yeah. Um, you're going to save some money. And I think you're going to be... You're going to be ready. The, the game's going to... Some kids aren't ready for D1. I don't know. The, no, the speed is... It's it's so... Definitely. I could... I could, Not to cut in, but definitely. I don't no, think... Cut I would, in. It's your I, episode. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't think I would have been ready right off the bat, even to go to the major leagues. Like, I think I would... They would have tried to help me along, and I would have stuck around for a little bit, but I don't think I would have made it. And I've seen it. There are guys that do make it. They're, they're already mature enough. They're there, and... It might be the high school that they go to, the coaching they've been around, or just God given talent. Just freaks. Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of stuff, I definitely understand. But a lot of times, either it's physically, mentally, academically, J- JC is perfect for you. If you're kind of up in the air about it, or you're like, ah, I don't know if I can, there's no hurt and no harm going And to I JC. think you also, you'll come to find, I don't love it as much as I thought I did. Mm hmm. I don't love it. I, I thought I wanted to be a D1 guy. I don't love the game because that's okay. That it's, happens. It's a grind, too. Like, see, the junior college is a grind. Mm-hmm. Four years of grind is a different level of grind. There's more limelight, I guess you can say. Even coming from Fresno State, it's a big school, but there's other big schools, too. There's Well, you're less restricted at JC. Yeah. Fresno State's got, you know, D1's got more restrictions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas City, it's okay. It's time we can go. You're kind of on your own you know, outside of the baseball field. Um, so you got to step your game up with the academics yeah. and, you know, cause nobody's sitting there telling you go to study hall or, you know, you got to get 20 hours of study hall this week. And, well, a lot you know, of the guys that we've talked to on here, you know, there's only a few that go right to D one. You know, a lot of guys go Juco route. And a lot of those guys that made excellent careers of playing the game, so, I mean, it's just good to see, you know, people continue to see that there's not one route that because I didn't get a D1 scholarship, you know, oh, it's I'm not going to make it yeah, to the pro ball or I, can't, I or, can't get to triple A yeah. and be that close to the dream. Well, you got to find the fit that works for you. And you guys mentioned that earlier. It, COS was a perfect fit for me. There's guys that I know did an awesome job over at Fresno City and probably wouldn't have made it over at COS and vice versa. And also some places up in Delta are orange coast like there's just a different level and a different coaching style and what you're used to so you got to find out what kind of coaching you're used to and figure out if that coach matches up with it or not talk to the players talk to whoever you need to talk to to figure out if that's going to be a fit for you or not and then also you got to make sure you yourself wants to do it because if you don't want to do it if other people are forcing you to do it now you're wasting it's not gonna it's not gonna turn out well yeah it's bad for you and it's bad for the program you're at You know, you start at COS, you get into state as a starter mm-hmm. and transition to the bullpen. And we kind of talked briefly before we started, like mentally, were you pissed? Were you just like, if that's the role you need me to take, I'm going to do it. Can you kind of talk about, you know, with Coach Bates and the pitching coach and kind of how that happened and where you were mentally with it? Well, as you guys know, Bates will... He you guys had an episode on here. He's tough. I love the I love the kind of coaching he is. And he told me I'm I remember him being on the mound saying, You're not throwing hard enough. You're not throwing ninety. You gotta throw ninety consistently. And that game I wasn't cutting it. And for me, I'm I'm a straight up guy. You tell me what I need to do and I'll I'll try to do it as best to my ability. I tried, didn't work, so he put me in the pen and I did what he needed me to do. So Do you feel like that helps you? I definitely think being in the pen helped me because it's a different mindset, different mentality than me going about my routine, kind of getting almost nonchalant about some of my work and just going through the motions and more about the bullpen. It's like, hey, get going. You got to go. So you don't get like a night to prepare like a starter, you know, did you like that better? Is that I mean, some guys don't adapt well to that. Yeah, I mean, it. I liked it better just based on the fact that you have a couple days to prepare, but for all, I don't know if I'm just different, but it could be the second day or the third day after I get done with my start, I feel like I could throw again. 
and you can't go up to your coach and be like, hey, I'm hot. Like, I'm, I'm ready to go. So I like that aspect of being a reliever is like, I'm good. Like, I'm good every day because of the routine and the way I take care of my arm and I guess just the mindset of being like, I got to be ready every day. Do you think that move made or break your career? I definitely think that if I was a starter, I wouldn't have got drafted. I definitely think so. I think so. I kind of want to go back a second because we kind of glossed over. You, you have a fantastic uh, sophomore year at COS. Was there any draft mm. speculation going 13-1 and one and being in a Final Four? Being a lefty. Being a lefty. And, I mean, you threw hard already. I mean, because you weren't throwing 90 doesn't mean you didn't throw a heavy ball. <laughs> Um, there probably could have been, but I, nobody pro, like you never, no, no coach, no coach never said, Hey, this is people reaching out. People are, so I think did you have a chip. I've always had a chip on my shoulder. <laughs> I think I, hey. I, I grew up a younger brother. I've always had my older brother picking on me and the chip's going to be there whether I like it or not. I just, I, sometimes I'll try to cover it up and be my own thing, but it's still there. That needs so. to be on a shirt, bro. <laughs> I've always had a chip. Yeah. yeah, like that's that's great. It's, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have that on our website. Yeah, yeah. You guys can make a shirt. I'll I'll wrap it for sure. I always have a chip. Thank you. I'm in. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, but that that's that's a drive though. You know, 100%. like having a chip on your shoulder is not a bad thing. It's almost well, great. I th- I think it about that. You. I think about yeah. it more as it relates to practice. Because not a lot of kids. But, <laughs> They don't it's, practice. They like, don't practice yeah. hard, man. They no. don't practice with a chip. Nope. How can you be pissed off when you don't you don't you don't work that hard in practice? Like you're not giving a hundred in practice, and you're giving a hundred in a game, and you're disappointed with the results. Well, well, not only that. What you am go, I supposed to do? You go to JUCO D one NAI D two whatever. There's three of you. They're almost the same. Yep. at Yeah, your position. So. You're not gonna go 100 percent in practice. You better. Well, you. So, and Basil said, it, "Like if I gotta motivate you guys, you know, then you just need to get out of here. This is I, this. <laughs> this is a different, this different level, different yeah. animal, and it, that goes all the way down. I don't even in high school. Yeah, if you I gotta motivate have to you guys to want to win. Just leave your stuff at the door, especially when we're out there for an hour and a half, two hours. Right. I just remember one thing Basil said, and it was during a game. We had it was a. Close game. We weren't doing too hot. I, I don't know if we were on a losing streak or not, but I remember being, I was a guy that would yell whenever we're cheering out. I'm the guy that will get some hype. I'll make some jokes, do whatever. And this game, it was just kind of dead silent in the dugout. And one of our guys goes like, like, Hey, why is it so quiet in here? And I was like, why don't you give us something to be like excited about? I'm a pitcher. I'm just sitting in here in the dugout. I'm not going to just be cheering when nothing's going on. And Batesville like looked at me and nothing was like said. And then the next day, we had this meeting, and he's like, all right, I got to I gotta talk to you about what happened yesterday. And we're like, what? And uh, he's like, Lee, what'd you say? And I, was, I thought I was in trouble. I was like, oh, man. Um, I said, if you wanted us to cheer, why don't you guys give us something to cheer about? And he's like, I love that. Like, that's what It was just some fire and some fight that I think that he likes to see, and some of that energy. I'm not going to fake does, it. Yeah. Like, he doesn't want just some rah-rah, like, cheer stuff. Like, if yeah. you give me something to cheer about, I'm going to be the guy that's like, yeah. Like, I'll be up there in home plate. You hit a home run, I'll be the first guy. So, yeah. That's one story that I remember. He's he's a no-BS guy, and I, that's why I think I like him so much. Yeah, I think. Me uh, too. <laughs> what's that? I said me too. Yeah. I love no-BS guys. They're easy to talk to. You know what you're getting. So, so that year, you, you get drafted in the 10th round. Uh was that like shock to you? I didn't think I was going to get drafted at in the all? tenth round at all, or or I might have. I thought I was going to either get picked up real late, just like a senior sign kind yeah, of deal. Yeah, senior sign, whatever. Here, and I I know now looking back, it was mainly just saving me money. But I understand the business part of it, so I'm just happy that they wanted to take me early enough, and it shows that they like me. So, what was that moment like? I was. It was crazy. I, I know I was delayed because Coach Basil and the my, the agent that I have now both called me, but it was, it was crazy. I was at my grandma's house. My family was there. We were just hanging out watching just, just to see if I got drafted, and 
the first day I was like, I'm not getting drafted the first day. We don't have to watch that. I know that. And then the second day I was like, maybe it could happen. So I, I'm glad I got picked up that day because the third day would have been real long and I would have been like, because <laughs> ah, that the third day just goes by real yeah, quick too. Yeah. It's just like boom, 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 boom. So it's it awesome, was awesome. Man. And so when you get into your first spring training and uh, like, what was that experience like? Was it nerves or were you like, what, you know, like not knowing what to anticipate? Well, once you get drafted, you go straight to the summer league or yeah, whatever it is. Well, short they, season. Short season. They can take you to your facility, check you out, make sure you're healthy, do a little physical. You kind of get a little, a little glimpse push of it. A little, little glimpse of kind of spring training like. Yeah. They'll take you to They did this through us. I don't know if it's normal throughout every team, but they took us through a little mini camp. After that mini camp, there's some guys that got sent up to short season and uh, Batavia. And I don't think anybody went to Greensboro, but we just stayed there at the summer league. Or, yeah. And then from that, we go about our business. And then the next spring training, I had no idea what to expect. Because I was like, what's going to go on? Is it going to be the same thing, just extended? And that's pretty much what it was. It was the mini camp, but just about a month of it. So. Yeah. And then do they go to Instructs, right? They make you go to... They didn't make me go to Instructs. After that, I don't know if it was because I was a higher draft pick or they saw something in me, but I'm, I'm grateful for that. I got to meet some people. I got to get a little closer with the coaches and some of the higher-up guys, too. Like, we met Don Mattingly and Jeter and them, and I was like, wow, this is, like, pretty sick. So How was that? It's awesome. Starstruck? <laughs> like, what do you do? Can you use it easy to stay focused? or? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's just me. I've never been the guy that gets really starstruck. I just like kind of going up and talking to someone and saying like, "Hey, like this guy's just a normal guy, just like me," and shaking their hand. And have you? Has it happened though? Being starstruck? Yeah. Have you had a moment? I think that'll happen if I ever meet Randy Johnson, okay. just because that's my guy. Like I grew up watching him. He's a big, tall lefty. My coach, junior, my JV coach, told me that I was big unit. So it's not a nickname that stuck, but he called me big unit. So it felt like I was associated with him <laughs> that's not that's not a bad person to want to no absolutely like. not yeah and um, he throws cheese so. yeah <laughs> he uh had bird video he's yeah I he mean, blew that's... that bird up i saw that one live <laughs> at my grandma's really? house yeah well i wasn't there but i, I know but I yeah. TV, yeah. on yeah. tv that's crazy i was like what where'd the ball go i didn't know where the ball <laughs> or the bird i just saw feathers i was like that is the coolest thing i think i've ever saw <laughs> just blew up when you were you was there any talk about switching it up or, or were you going to stay in the pen when you got drafted i actually started when i got drafted i was a starter in batavia a little bit in greensboro i had a flexor injury and then went to uh the pen have you had to deal with any of that stuff like you had been lucky with as far as health goes health wise yeah i think it was mainly overtraining with my flexor i was doing too much and stretching i think a little too much i never knew that was a thing i thought stretching was good like you should do stretching all the time. But I was doing a little bit too much lifting and a little too much stretching, like overstretching. And that was my issue was getting irritated. My flexors were irritated. My ulnar nerve was inflamed. Like everything was inflamed. So that's the only issue that I really think I've ever had. Other than that, it's just been maintaining or maintaining little issues and they clear up. You know, guys... Running a hundred yard dashes and throwing the ball as hard as they can into a net. Yeah, it's just I'm. I feel like if you're an outfielder, I feel like if you're you're trying to build, like, talk about what they're doing because people are showing that, but there's build up to that, right? They're using training balls. They're doing things prior. Yeah, they're, to they're testing not just, the velo. It's not just running and doing that out of nowhere. Yeah, they're spending weeks. Doing other things to train, build up to, right, to build their arm strength. So when people see those videos, like, oh man, he just picked up a ball and threw it that hard. No, they're actually testing That's velocity. That's just the video that they took, and that was the best video that they got from it. But is it kind of ridiculous? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't mean, have see, you ever thought of that? Let I don't go run and. I don't think that I've done long toss. I've done that type of thing. It's a build up stage, but I, I for me, I just don't see the importance of it unless you're. An outfielder unless you're a guy trying to build that type of speed but the trajectory of it is just all off 
And even for an outfielder, I don't think you're one a rainbow shot maybe to hit the top of the backstop. Like, but in this day and age, I've also seen guys that are getting drafted nowadays that I don't think would have got drafted when I was like playing. I saw guys doing throwing like 86 or 80 something lefties or righties getting picked up. And I was like, whoa, this is happening. So I feel like it's more the game's changing. They're going a lot on st statistics. They want to go off of spin rate, spin efficiency, and those numbers more than just velocity. Because I've seen guys that throw 100. I've seen guys that throw 101, 103. And I've also seen guys that are just 90 in paint, and they're the same place I am. So I can't. I, it's hard for me to say that velo is the determining factor when I've seen You've seen both ways. I've seen other things. Yeah, so. yeah. But ultimately, your goal is to get people out. That's the and, end all. And goal. Throwing yeah. strikes and having movement. Yes. Is going to do that for you. Not throwing 99, 100, 103 straight. And most of the time it's they're th going back to the topic of throwing it into the net. They're throwing it into the net with either not even a baseball. They're throwing it with this other training ball and I don't I don't see the effect of that. I I'd rather have something going flat or downhill cuz that's what you want to work on. <laughs> that's where your your plane is down especially as a pitcher like for me i want to work on a mound as most as possible but i've also known that it's not good to go off a mound it's throwing downhill it's more torque on your arm so i do most of my work on a flat ground and i get the same job done i see movement in my balls and the same thing's going to happen when you're going to go on downhill you just got to find that trajectory and people are going to probably say you can do the same thing from going up to here to here but your arm path's going to be different your mechanics are going to be different and your arm getting up to that point when your foot lands, those videos need to show where their foot lands and where their arm is and where their shoulder is. Cause if you look at that stuff, you'll see that they're out of line and not in sync with her throwing motion. We'll have to, we'll have to pause some of those and put them up. Break there. them down. Yeah. You'll ha you'll see shoulders. You'll the lower half is probably perfect. Cause that's what you, it's really driving, really forcing but they're just that, and they're teaching that, those motions, and it's just not healthy for arms, uh, for in my mind, because I've seen people get hurt. So, so what's your routine? You're 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 coming out. You're getting ready to leave, right? Yep. You going to big league camp? Yeah. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That uh, that money meal money is gonna be a lot better. <laughs> that meal money is about as much as I make during the season. So. <laughs> I, That's I try to not keep a it, lie. I not try to lie. keep it. Are you anxious? A little bit. This is my second time going, and I'm definitely more hungrier than the first time. I think the first time, I thought I was prepared, and well, they told me a little later. This time, they told me earlier, so I'm more prepared in, in that aspect. But I'm definitely going to be more prepared. I interrupted you. We we're talking about your routine. Yeah. Um, and going into, you know, your weekly work and, and things you do to get prepared and mm -hmm. just. So our, our, you know, younger kids or, or high school players that want to get there can hear it from uh, a guy that's going there. Yeah, I definitely feel like my routine might be different from other people. I feel like I'm more body weight and body movements. I want to be as flexible and strong as I can, but still having enough strength and being strong to put it up with anybody. And I just went to go with my trainer that I have. And he told me to do this workout. It was like a hundred reps in 20 sets of squatting. And I haven't done that in a while. I was mainly doing just body weight stuff and some light workout stuff. And he put in weight on and I was doing it easy. And he's like, where you been working out? I was like, at my house. Like I, I don't do anything crazy. I just do some push ups, pull ups, sit ups, like, mobile like shoulder workouts is the biggest thing for me i do a lot of scap things it's stuff that i find online and i try it and i work at it and it's just the routine that i've made i do during the season i try to do a shoulder workout that the rehab guys do so they get a ball and they'll bounce it and they're trying to on the wall yeah on they'll the wall. bounce it on the wall they'll go like up and down they'll do just it's mobility stuff 
And that's the biggest thing for me is I wasn't mobile. And that's why I got hurt with my flexors is that they were too tight. So I don't want that to happen anywhere else. And also I don't want a shoulder injury and I don't want an elbow injury. So when I found out those workouts that the UCL guys do and the shoulder workouts guys do, I try to maintenance it because they're building up strength. So when they're building up strength, I don't understand why we don't do it. Like we should be building your, our shoulders up and our elbows up, but they don't do any maintenance workouts that they do with us. So I do it by myself and I figure out that that is enough for me to do. I don't need to do any of the extra stuff. I don't need to do the heavy bench press or dumbbell curls that don't really do much for a pitcher. So it seems like it's, and you, well, you're not overdoing it that way either. No. And I, another thing that I forgot to mention is that we play a hundred whatever games. So I have to work out and find a balance between working out and playing. I have to be ready to pitch every day or two days in a row, one day off the next day. So I can't be getting those heavy lifts in and doing those heavy workouts. So mainly my stuff is lighter work and I just feel like that's the best for me. Yeah. I think that's actually a pretty good way of going about doing it too. I mean, you need to be athletic. Yeah. You can't be stiff. Um, you know, you said something interesting too about during the season, you know, being ready to pitch every day, every you know, two days in a row. Do you kind of know your schedule Mm-mm. come season or manager doesn't, you know, say, Hey, we're going to go, you know, every maybe third day or fourth day for you, you may get some rest. If you, cause you never know when you're going to be used, I guess. No. Um, I was told I could never pitch three days in a row as a reliever, but it was, there was times where it was like two innings. I didn't throw a lot of pitches. They asked me if I was good for the next day. I said, yeah, I'm fine. Through the next day, mandatory one day off through the next day. And this was not last year, but the year before last when I was having a pretty good run over in Jacksonville. And they wanted me to just, I don't know if they were testing my workload, seeing how much I could do, but I was, I felt like I was getting like used and abused. But for me, I was asking other guys and they said, they're testing you out. They want to see what your workload is, like how much can you put up with? So I think I threw... I think it was five or six innings in a week, which was a lot for me. So it was like the two days that I said, mandatory one day off. The next day I pitched and I asked if I could have another day off because my arm was a little sore. That's the most workload I've done in like a week. So I was like, can I get another day off? Cause I need it. And then after that day, I pitched the next day. My coach was like, are you good? Like you get a throw. I know you're saying you needed a day off. Like, why'd you need a day off? I was this is new to me. This is my first time in the pen. And I feel like I was like throwing, 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 throwing. And it was just a different transition to me. And after that, I got a, after the game I pitched in, I got a call to go into the office. So I went inside the office and my manager was like, Hey, uh, the pitching coach was saying like, you're, you're hurting or you need a day off. And I was like, no, I, I told them I was good. I was looking at the pitching. I was like, dude, what the heck are you doing? You can't be messing with me like that. Like saying that I'm hurt when I, I'm good. And he's like, yeah, well, he's just saying that your arm's like tender or whatever. And I was like, no, 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 it's fine. He's like, all right, good, because they're going to need you in AAA. And I was like, oh, geez. <laughs> I was like, I'm just, ro- my arm's roasted, so let's go. Let's yeah, go to AAA the ticket now. ticket at, yeah. <laughs> so um, I went to AAA, and I was like, man, they're going to make me throw back-to-back days on a travel day. That's going to suck. So <laughs> I went up there, and they were I couldn't sleep. I, this is my first time being in AAA. I couldn't sleep. I was just excited. I woke up for my flight at like four o'clock because they gave me a six a.m. flight, and flew out of Jacksonville to New Orleans. Met the team in New Orleans. I was sitting in the bullpen. I was asking the guys. These are like some guys I knew. Some guys that this is my first time meeting them. I was like, "Can you guys like make sure I don't fall asleep in the bullpen?" Because I'm like tired. And uh, fortunately enough, I didn't have to go in that day. But the next day, I threw two innings. Right. This, First time I pitched, so. How was that? It was good. I I think I had like four strikeouts, two innings, and maybe one guy on base. So it was nice. It I, I try to tell everybody that it's not the levels that you need to look at. It's more about just being consistent. And you can't be thinking about who's in their batter's box. You can't be thinking about, oh man, I'm at this level or I'm at this stadium or I'm at this, like. Just go out there, do your thing. It doesn't matter if you're an outfielder, you're a shortstop, you're a first baseman, you're a catcher. 
the work that you've gotten to the place that you're at, let's say you're in junior college, you're in a four year in the NAI, you're in professional baseball, you're there for a reason. The coaches obviously think you can do the job and you got to know in yourself that you can do the job. So don't look at it like oh, I'm in AAA. I'm at this level that is really prestigious or pristine. I need to go and put a lot of pressure on myself. Just go out there and have fun and let your ability to take over. And you're going to find out that you're going to have fun and you're going to be doing well. And it's the best feeling. I'm sure you, you know that feeling. It's, it, it, I can't explain it. It's just you're having fun. You're messing around. There's a good group of guys around you. It seems like it takes the pressure off. Like you, I'm just sitting here and I'm listening to you and it feels like you don't play with that pressure on your shoulder of I've got to perform today or, or they're going to send me down. They're going to let me go there. It's just go do what I do. Yep. Uh, my brother says it perfectly. He says I get to play recess all day. So. Yeah. Well, one more week. Um, Dude, I, I know we've been trying to get this set up for, you know, about a month now. So I'm yeah, glad. I was excited when you called me. I was like, man, I, that's awesome. Let's go do this thing. Yeah, we talked for like an hour. We did our own show. I wish we would have recorded that. Yeah. That was a really good episode. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that happens. It happens a lot. Yeah, it does. Uh, most of the time, a lot of the fun stuff. Well, this was fun. Are you kidding me? Of course. Um, but yeah, just different things, different. We conversations. talked for like two and a half hours. It was, I feel like it, it, it was it, it was it, lengthy. Yeah, no, it was a good conversation. I was excited. I told Chad. I called him. Like, hey, bro, this is gonna be <laughs> lots of fun, man. And and it was. No, I, I appreciate you driving down here and on a Sunday. We're working on a Sunday, uh, playoff Sunday. Yeah. And, uh, Everybody's watching the football game right now anyways. I don't think it started yet. <laughs> 12. Uh, Fresno whatever. State, or Fresno State. San Francisco is at 12, I think. <laughs> Who cares? You They're going to win anyways. Who are your picks today? Well, I'm not too big on stuff, especially sport-wise. I'm, I'm even. I don't like picking teams nowadays because too many players transition in and out of teams. So I'm more of like a player guy. I'll watch players. Okay. Who's your player right now for the NFL? I don't watch too much NFL. <laughs> what about baseball? Judge. No. <laughs> I During the season, the only time I watch is like the Marlins, when, especially in AAA. I never knew that was such a thing where you'd watch who got hurt, who's like doing what. And AAA, they're, they're mainly just watching to see who, like if somebody got hit by a ball or somebody got injured during the game. And it's, it's sad to think about, but that's when people get moved. So that's mainly when I'm watching stuff in baseball. I don't really watch it too much no. outside of baseball. All right. All right. Just that would throw it out there, see if there was a... He is a lefty pitcher, so... Well, Randy Johnson. They, they, they are known to be a little out A little there. weird. That's all right. <laughs> Andy's a weird right-handed pitcher, so... <laughs> Andy should have been lefty. <laughs> Probably in the big leagues. There's a lot of guys that they're like, yeah, you're definitely left-handed, so... <laughs> It's not a bad thing. No. no. Heck no. I, I embrace it. No, it, dude, the people don't. It's, 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 it sucks. I'm left handed. I write left handed. You know, you're not left handed. I write left handed. Don't claim yes. to be left handed. <laughs> you're not left handed. You played, yeah. you played third base in bad right handed. You're not left handed. I, I write left handed. And so people don't realize just growing up how much life sucked. I need, to just, I need to just put like another shirt idea is like, I'm left handed. I'm weird. That's, yeah, that's yeah another, that works too. Because then they don't even have to ask, or they they see me doing something weird. They're like, nah, they just know. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, it makes <laughs> like, sense. Yeah, we'll leave him alone. He's okay. Yeah. No, no. Uh, <laughs> no, I appreciate you coming down here on a Sunday, uh, taking time out of your day away from your family right before you're leaving. But uh, I'm glad we got to get this in. And uh, dude, if we we can help you in any way, we'd love to. You helped. I mean, I learned some stuff today. Just definitely want to take a little more of your mental approach to the game, man. I think I think that's. If I took anything, that's one thing I think anybody could use uh, in, in any sport. Yeah. You know, that mental approach is just... Even it, life, it, just, yeah. I haven't talked to many people that are there on that level. So, uh, dude, all all the best, man. I hope you guys, I hope you get where you want to go this year, man. You're close. Thank and, you, yeah. Uh, we'll be rooting on, rooting you on, man. Yeah, next offseason, we'll, uh, we'll be getting the big leaguer Dylan Lee on here. <laughs> yeah. No, the same guy. Hopefully. I'm telling you, it's going to be the That's same. That's another thing. thing we talked about. Be you the know? same thing. You know, just being humble. Yeah. You know, my parents they're probably still going to be living in Dinuba. but my grandparents will live there. I I love the small city stuff. You I, are who you are, dude, and that's 
That's fantastic. There's nothing wrong with There's that. There's nothing fake about that. I think that's why I appreciate it. Yeah. I yeah. appreciate you guys accepting me for Heck who I no, am. Yeah, 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 <laughs> always, always. Um, yeah. Well, good luck this year, man. We'll be following you and, and make sure everybody goes and uh, keeps our eye on Dylan Lee here. And uh, chat. anything else? No, it was great, man. And we're, I'm, he's been talking my head off about getting you on, so I'm, <laughs> I'm glad we finally did it and uh, got to meet you. And yeah, nothing but the best this year. And, you know, knowing your mindset and where you're at, I mean, it's going to happen. Appreciate it. It, it is going to happen. Yeah, I know. That's, uh, again, I'm excited, man. Again, thank you for coming down. And uh, well, that's every, uh, episode 37 of the Hit or Die podcast. Thanks, everybody. Hit or die. <laughs>